Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 7, season 6 of The Canary Room. Uh, an action-packed episode in store for you today. So um, before I start, a couple of, a couple of shout-outs. So um, Sammy at SNS, um, if you haven't seen Sammy's videos, you, you've got to check them out. We've been doing the Native Diaries here in The Canary Room. Sammy keeps native finches um, and he does some he does some great little videos really nice vlog type videos so well done sammy mate um philip as well with his uh, his reds some lovely birds there um and you know it's been said red fact the man said it this week everyone who's doing these videos uh, it's all a good thing so well done everyone um I enjoy them. Uh, my wife less so, because uh, she loses me for hours on end. So, what have we got in store for you today on the show? Well, we've got our features. We've got the Red Pole Diaries. We've got the Norwich Notebook. We've got New Colour Corner. We'll also see, obviously, what's going on with the Fives. A couple of questions have come into the show from some of the things you've seen, so I'll do my best to answer them. Over the next few weeks, you're in for a real, real, real treat. So today on the show, um, I've got a little bit of footage for uh, a visit when I went to see Gerald Spencer. I didn't get Gerald on camera, a little bit camera shy. Managed to get a picture of him, but not a great deal else. But I did film some of his birds at the very start of the breeding season. So we'll have a little uh, a look at them later on. Um, coming up, we've got a trip to see Terry Kelly and his incredible new bird room. So... Um, Terry, always, always good value, absolute legend in the Fife Fancy, and his new bird room is something else. So that will be out, I think, next week. What we'll probably do is a Native Diaries and an episode with Terry Kelly at the same time. So double bubble next Sunday for you. Um, we've also got a trip to Matt Dando. That will probably come out at the end of the month um, again with a Native Diaries episode, so another Double Bubble Sunday for you there. Um, Matt's had a, a cracking start, absolutely cracking start. So lots and lots and lots to look forward to coming up, but also hopefully lots to look forward to on today's show. You know what to do, everyone. Grab yourself a cuppa, sit back and enjoy the show. We've been busy, busy. Well, actually, I've been busy, but the birds have been even busier. Um, over the last couple of weeks since we were last in the canary room we have now over 50 eggs laid um, our first nests are due this weekend they look full what I haven't done is I haven't checked the eggs so this early on in the season I'm really quite happy for hens to sit a full 40 in 15 days however long the incubation is um, and quite happy for them to sit those days and, you know, if the eggs are, are, are empty or they don't hatch for one reason or another, I'll split them and I'll just put them back down again. So we have got a number of hens sat um, on eggs. We've got a, a number of hens um, who are in the process of laying. Um, we'll report that the, uh, the hens that didn't lay for me last year still haven't laid yet. Now... Um, only one of those birds I've seen being mated. One is as a pair, um, and the other is a, the fawn hen as a trio, although the fawn hen's just starting to build up. So there is a variegated, which is, as I look now, sort of shuffling down in the nest pan to build the nest. Um, she's been mated, been mated numerous times. Um, no egg yet, no egg yet. So what am I doing to encourage egg laying? Well, you know, I'm, I'm giving them, um, uh, there's a multivit in the, in the water at the moment, but I'm giving them um, a liquid calcium two or three times a week. There is some uh, cuttlefish in the bottom of the cages as well. So if she doesn't lay, it won't be because of calcium deficiency. The other two hens were late bred last year. And so I'm hoping that actually the reason they didn't lay last year was that they weren't sexually mature enough. Um, so that is the hope. So a couple of questions have come in to me on the show, and, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that in the cages that I have um, here with the hens in, the single hens in, there's only one perch. Um, and a number of you have said, why, why have you only got one perch in there, Matt? Um, and 
there's a really really good reason to it i use um i use front pans now with these plastic cages and what i was finding was the second perch was sort of fouling either the door or the ability to to sort of move the pan and what i was having to do was get my big hands in and then go up and over the perches to pull the pans out and then i'm banging them on perches and i lost a couple of eggs last year so um one of the great things about these pans is that they are naturally quite springy so hopefully when we get chicks what will happen is the hen will bounce onto the pan that will encourage the chicks to come up to be fed um, and the hen will feed them what I found was happening a few times last year was the pan was almost wedged it was sticking uh, and it wasn't sort of bobbing you don't want it to bounce too high but it, it, it wasn't really um it wasn't really moving and the hen would go to the nest and the chicks wouldn't pull up so that's just something that um that i've tried uh this year now the other question that's come in was um you know how do i run how do i run the cock birds in and um with the fifes uh, in fact probably only with the fifes most of everything else the feeders the new colors are certainly paired up the majority of the norwich are paired up but with the fifes it's um there's a number of trios so this top two rows here are hens in trios and there's a few hens down the bottom as well that have got a, a, a few things going on a few birds and um, being mated with them so um cocks stay on the top uh, and essentially what i do is i'll run a cock into a training cage i will show him to his hen normally she squats normally he jumps straight on and treads and um, i've got a little bit of footage of something i've done this morning i do that sort of three or four times a day um so i've got a little bit of footage here i, I ran a self um or nearly self uh, buff cocking uh, with a really nice hen she laid her first egg um this morning actually um so uh, she squatted she did everything and he was worried about a little bit of cotton that he'd got caught on his foot so he did nothing fortunately uh, i didn't quite get the amber camera angle right for this next one so you can just see there's a variegated buff cock and a um, saddleback yellow hen um, and that worked quite well and then finally i think i got the camera angle right on this one although i haven't played it back yet as footage so you might just see my back um, there is a, a clear buff cock and a ticked yellow hen um, and I run him in mate straight away and then often I'll take them pretty much straight out sometimes they'll um, mate a couple of times what I like is when they mate off the perch as you can see I'm, I'm running a variegated cock in here with a heavily variegated buff hen she's calling to him on the nest but he isn't interested um, so just out of shot speaking of on the nest i've just seen a uh, clear buff cock norwich mate the uh, dark tail yellow hen which is brilliant news so fingers crossed for those um so um that's how i run them in um it you know it seems to it seems to work okay so that's our first little look at the fives. We'll have another look at them a little bit later on. But, well, we've just mentioned them. Let's have a look at them now. It's time for the Norwich Notebook. Well, the Norwich are in, in really good form, actually. So um, I took the hens um, at the, the beginning of the month out of the flight cage, just, just towards the end of March, beginning of April. Uh, I trimmed them all up and I put them um, alongside their intended mates. Now, what I did was I put a wire divider in. Uh, I've got some footage here where you can see the birds feeding in between the wire divider, which is, which is a great sign. So a very steady introduction, um, which I think is important with the Norwich. So a nice bit of feeding going on here. The dark... Uh, tail feathered yellow hen um we've just seen her mate she built a nest up as soon as i put a pan in i hang uh, had the pans hanging on the outside as soon as i put a pan in um she was building uh, so we've just seen her mated now which is great the dark buff five cock <laughs> out of shot there 
um, is mating with the a dark yellow hen. So um, it's all it's all go. It's all go in the canary room. Um, so the Norwich, I've got the two pairs here, which are from the Keith Ferry line, uh, which I'm really looking forward. I've got another Keith Ferry buff hen here. So I'll run the yellow cock in here with her. Um, I've got a, a, a pair of um, with a white in it from really good friends, um, Arwell and Richard. Uh, and then I've got another white with, um, with a, a buff hen. Uh, and that buff hen is picking up already. So the Norwich, you know, is still relatively early for them, certainly for the bigger varieties. Um, but the Norwich seem to be um, on the move, which is good. That's, you know, that's what we want. We want them to be sort of moving forward quite nicely. The, uh, the sort of Norwich-based feeders that we've got, they've both built nests now. Um, one of the pairs built a nest a while ago. They haven't laid yet. The other one hasn't laid. I'm not unduly concerned about that. Um, you know, if they lay and, and I can coincide, they're laying with the Norwich. That would be absolutely incredible because um, uh, they'll obviously help me do a job there. So I'm not unduly concerned about that. The only other thing to mention in the, the Norwich, again, it's an issue with purchase, but it's not really an issue. It's a bit of advice that uh, I was given by Paul Gilchrist, um, Mac Finch, as he's also known, and that's to have a lower down perch so in all of the heavily feathered birds so the norwich the the borders i've got a third perch in the cage and that's just at a slightly lower level um, and it's just that sometimes because they're bigger heavier birds they, they can fall off <laughs> um so that you know rather than have them sort of mate on the floor and run the risk of not hooking under um i've given them a uh uh, a lower perch to do that so so far so good with the Norwich let's keep all of our fingers crossed for them as we head over to the back of the room and we check in with the Red Pole Diaries the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that we've got a little bit of decoration in in the uh, in the native british cages so all of the native pairs the siskins the twites uh, and there's four pairs of red poles on this back wall they're all paired up now um, and what i've done and um, they've got the twites have got two sites in two nest sites the rest of the birds at the moment have only got one on this side um, so they've got this front box here with a little bit of sort of foliage around so um, birds are coming into quite nice condition now there's a lot of trilling there's a lot of chirping there's a lot of beaking going on there's a lot of collecting of material there are the early stages of some nest building as well which is really encouraging to see um, so uh, you know they're, they're sort of stripping material what I'd like to do is get a second site in there as well um, I always like to give the native finches at least two sites to choose from. Um, they can be really funny. Uh, if they don't like the one that you've provided and there's only one, then simply, you know, they won't go to nest or I've had them in the past nesting grip pots. Um, so what I want to do with these is, is put a second site in and I'll try and do that over the next week or so. Um, with the, uh, the normals and the... Um, the Cobalts, they've already got a second site in and the Normals have started to build in that second site. So two of the pairs of Red Poles at the moment are starting to build. Um, we had a, um, a sort of question mark about this pair here. I think it's a split cock. It's certainly a split cock and I think it's a split hen. Um, now, as they start to come into breeding condition, there hasn't been any aggression shown yet, so I don't know is, is the honest answer. Hopefully, that's exactly what they are. Um, you'll also notice I've started to feed the birds a little bit of live food, so they're getting egg food a couple of times a week now, um, and I've started to feed them some live food. So that's in the form of mini mealworms. I've got them in these little pots. Um, these little pots, I think, are uh, ingenious. 
um, essentially they, they keep the mealworms in, which is one of the biggest challenges. Anyone who's had mealworms will know they have a tendency of crawling all over the cage. Um, that's before they get eaten. Um, but also it keeps, um, it keeps the birds sort of active. So the birds have sort of really got to poke in and, and have a look around them, which, you know, I think is... Um, I think it's great. I think a little bit of extra stimulants for them, which is brilliant. So that's our Red Pole Diaries this week. No eggs, um, you know, but some early signs of nest building. So hopefully next time we're back in the canary room, we'll have some eggs to report. I mentioned it at the uh, the outset of the show. We took a trip um, to actually on his birthday to see Gerald Spencer. And, you know, a quick pan around Gerald's room here, which breeding season, immaculate condition. I expect nothing less. The husbandry in Gerald's room is absolutely incredible. Um, so really, really, really lovely uh, room, lovely setup, lovely and clean. Um, and, you know, a really good steady start for him when I went in there, number of birds laying, uh, number of birds sitting, no chicks yet, but relatively early in the season. So hopefully you enjoy the footage that we managed to capture there. Back in our room, uh, well, a bit more progress really to, to talk about, and that's with the white line of fifes that we're running. Um, so regular viewers to the channel will be aware that we've got, um, well, we, we wanted to have four pairs of, uh, of whites. We lost a white hen, regrettably, before the start of the season. So we've got three pairs of whites on this floor, on this uh, side of the room here. Um, and they, you know, they seem to be doing well. I've got a white down on five eggs. Um, the other two, so there's another white hen next to it, which is built up. Uh, and then there's a buff hen with the white variegated cock, which actually came from Gerald's shed, which is also built up. I'm not sure about that pair. He is very much interested in a variegated yellow hen, which is on the other wall. Now he's already put her down on five eggs. Um, and one of the things I have noticed this year uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, over 50 eggs so far laid has been um, an improvement, an increase in the number of eggs. So um, I've got a clear yellow hen uh, in cage seven. She's on five eggs now. In the round she, she laid last year, she was laying threes and fours. Now, part of that will be down to the development as a bird and part of that will be down to the Unifeed product that I'm using from Matt Chudley at Peckway. So, um, you know, too early to say, but the early signs certainly in the room are that there is an increase in, in the, the volume of eggs. So on the white line here, we've got um, sort of four pairs um, in, in total, really still. We've got a blue hen, which isn't really doing a great deal at the moment. I'm running the fawn cock over her. Um, so not really doing a great deal at the moment. But that's the white line of fifes. And hopefully over the course of the next few weeks, um, we'll see a little bit more. Speaking of whites, the allied to white border cock and the, the hen, they're looking in good nick. They're all trimmed. There's a little bit of nesting material in there. It's a little bit of an untidy nest, to be honest. So we'll see how they get on over the next couple of weeks as well. So we'll finish the show now with a trip to New Color Corner. So with our red, black, grey wings in New Colour Corner, we've got three pairs we're running with this year. We've got an old hen on a red ring. Um, she has actually laid an egg. Uh, she's just laid the one, so I've, I've set that under a fife, actually. Um, the other two hens are both down on four eggs. Um, they're due to hatch this weekend, so we'll see. We'll see how they get on. Um, you know, the, the hens have been on and off the nest a little bit. We've had a few sort of frosty nights so you know fine for them to get off the the, the nests um not great if they've let the eggs go cold on a frosty night 
um, so that'll be dead in shell. I haven't checked the eggs, they look full. Um, generally speaking, when you're looking at eggs, you can see um, that the, uh, they, they darken in the nest and that's an indicator often that they're full. One of the other questions that I've been asked actually is, um, you know, when do you set your eggs? What do you do now? Uh, I know some people don't take eggs away. Um, I am taking eggs away this year, certainly for the first round. I might not in later rounds. Um, one of the things I look out for, and we can see it here, is the blue egg. Um, so I normally wait until I've seen sort of four eggs. And then if the, the fourth egg is bluey in colour, uh, then I know the hen isn't going to lay any more. If it isn't, I can expect often that the hen will lay a fifth. So um, I do take the eggs away. I hold them in a little drawer here. And um, in doing so, I keep, um, I keep them, you know, sort of safe, if you like. Uh, and then I set them on the um on the evening of the fourth so red black gray wings you know fingers crossed for them uh hopefully they will be um rearing chicks next time we see you in the canary room well listen that's all we've got time for don't forget native diaries coming up next week this time we're going to look at twites we're going to look at siskins uh, and we're going to look at the red poles in there as well um, we'll also have a trip to Terry Kelly coming up on the channel soon, trip to Matt Dando, more thrills and spills from the Canary Room. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It doesn't cost anything. Um, just hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll get updates of when we produce new shows and new content for you. Thanks everyone for all of your kind words about the channel. It really does make a difference to me. I really appreciate that. Hit the like button. And uh, until next time, everyone, take care.